Well, 2021 is almost over. And if you're a creative, I think it's important to sit down and reflect and learn about how your work has improved throughout the year. So as I look through my work from this year, I wanna share several new tricks that I've developed in After Effects that I believe has made my work significantly better. And hopefully this quick After Effects video will give you some ideas to improve your work within a short amount of time. So as always, please smash that like button specifically if you enjoy this video. It does help us out tremendously. But other than that, let's jump in and hear some After Effects tricks from 2021. So I've always been a fan of using distortion effects, but this year I specifically fell in love with one effect and I wanna talk about it, which is the CC scale wipe effect. Now I just don't love placing this around randomly. I love using this effect to pull your audience into the composition or into the body of work. So what we can do is take an adjustment layer and go to effect and go to transition and grab the CC scale wipe uh, effect. We just change our direction to wherever we want this to be and we can increase the stretch. And what this is gonna do is gonna pull your composition up or down or any direction that you want and you can change easily where you want this effect to take place at. So now with the CC scale wipe effect, we can really fill in you know, our composition. And here's another example of the CC scale wipe in play. So we have this crazy distortion going on here, but I, we can take this to the next level and fill up our composition with the CC scale wipe effect. And just to quickly mention, everything in our store will be up to 40% off for Cyber Monday. So if you're looking to produce amazing work incredibly fast, you can check out all the After Effects and Premiere Pro templates on our website, sundarkfilm.com. We currently have over 4,000 templates all stored within our packs that you can use with our extension panel inside of After Effects and Premiere Pro. You can also download our free packs for Premiere Pro and After Effects as well. Those links will be in the description below. So one of the second things that I've really improved upon this year is utilizing the 3D depth of your composition. So a lot of motion graphics work can be done in a 2D space, but you know, you sometimes you should utilize the space of 3D. You can use this by you know creating spheres, which I've done a lot of in 3D space, uh, or simply just by creating an object and offsetting it in 3D space as well. So for example, here we have these grids laying here in 3D space, and without them, you know, this would just be a whatever composition, but by adding a little bit of detail in 3D space. So let's say, for example, we have a simple grid effect in here that you can grab from generate grid. And you know, you can easily just turn that into a 3D layer and hit R and you can grab say the X rotation is set to 90 degrees or the Y rotation, either one. Uh, and then you can just position it anywhere in your comp. And now we have a 3D depth to our scene. So think about how you can use all three dimensions and you're seeing from X, Y, and Z. So recently this year, I've been really putting my head into the light and shadow of a composition. And I've been a big fan of using the glow effect throughout the years, uh, which helps glow and brighten up your scene. Uh, but one effect that I would like to start using more that I started using more is the CC spotlight effect. Uh, and this is a great way to quickly create contrast and focus onto your scene. So when you're trying to create light and shadow, uh, for example, how this would work, you know, we have our composition here looks great. We'll just come here to effect perspective and we'll grab CC spotlight and automatically, you know, by default, it's not that great, but we take this anchor point and we can move it outward and we can angle it and we can kind of just position where we want this light of the scene to be. Uh, and I think it's really uh, a cool effect to work with, you know, and even here, you know, we can quickly just stack the glow effect to help the brightness of the scene. So we'll go to effect, stylize, grab glow, and you just boost up the glow radius and then you just quickly can duplicate the glow effect and increase glow radius even more and we increase the glow intensity if you like. And this will help glow out your objects. And then even we can do this further and we can increase the uh, light and shadow of the scene by going and applying that CC spotlight effect to the scene and dialing in how we want it to be. And you know, it's a little bit crazy, but you can lower the intensity of this effect. And I love this effect because you get this very nice smooth gradient on text and other objects in this scene. And it just looks really uh, natural. Another substitute, if you don't like the spotlight effect, just quickly add a uh, quick CC vignette, which I haven't really used that often in the past, uh, but it does help make a little bit of a difference around the edges of your composition. So I think it's really nice to use one of those effects uh, along with some glow effects and create some contrast, some light and shadow in your scene to really take it to the next level. Another quick tip that you should always integrate into your work if you can, because this is motion graphics. If you have a background, you should add movement to it, but you don't need to go crazy with it. So one thing that I do a lot, if I have background objects, instead of just doing some complex animation, so we have say these circles here. And all I did was I all cut the stopwatch for position and I just added a wiggle. So I know this is a very simple tip, uh, but if you can have a bunch of objects in your background or a few subtle objects in your background at least, uh, by adding the wiggle effect on some background objects in a 3D space environment like we've talked about, uh, it's definitely gonna help uh, bring a little bit more detail uh, to your motion graphics 
uh, and you know really fill up the composition. So it's a really quick and easy way to just bring your work to the next level uh, by adding a little bit more animation detail. So for this last point, I didn't really want to start the video with this because I have no idea how this would land. Uh, but think about how your graphics fall into the entire environment of world building. When you're putting together full compositions, you're building a world, you're putting all these graphics together. And I think it's important when you're putting the other graphics, you know, think about how do these graphics tell the story of this world in a way. So every element should at least have some purpose uh, and fall in line. So one thing you'll notice in these compositions that we're taking a look right here is that one, there's a consistent color palette, there's consistency in the graphics, uh, and everything kind of has a purpose uh, to help tell the story. So think about you know the depth of your scene like we talked about previously in this video. Uh, consider the lighting and the shadow, uh, which we also talked about to tie all that, you know, those graphics together. And of course, are all these graphics consistent uh, and do they fit into this world? And what's great about the three previous techniques uh, is that I really think those three really fall in line uh, with building a world. Always be thinking about you know, 3D depth in your scene, the light and shadow, and always be thinking about the movement around your background because you know in a real world, there will always be other things going on and moving around rather than just you know, your main subject of your motion graphic scene. So there's no technical in this one, just more uh, theory and thoughts for you to consider. So hopefully now you can take these ideas from these tutorials and implement it into your own work. You know, just a few things here and there might go a long way for your future projects. So pick and choose what works best for you. Things that I did in this video, I think kind of reflect the style that I'm looking to form and grow upon. And it's very important to be intentional with what you're using for your videos. Just don't throw a random effect in there because it looks cool. You know, have a reason behind it. Always try to assign a meaning behind why you're doing something. So if you're new here, be sure to smash that subscribe button. We post multiple post-production tutorials every single week. You can hit us up on our Instagram. We got tutorials and other cool After Effects posts on there. That link will be below. And always be creating.